Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. A little update on Versant before we get started. We are all still working remotely. It is going remarkably well. We are in phase one of reopening here in Arizona. Versant's management team is putting together our plan and protocols to get some of our people back into the office. June 1st is our target date. However, with schools and daycares still closed, we will probably only have a few people at first. We will likely go to a rotating schedule in order to meet the guidelines for social distancing. Our number one priority is keeping our people safe, people being clients, staff, and vendors. We will be communicating our plans as they come together, but for now, Zoom re will remain our meeting platform for the foreseeable future. Many of you have been asking about us, about how we are holding up during this pandemic. You are asking if our phones are ringing off the hook. Luckily, I can answer no, <laughs> because we've been communicating with you so often in many different ways phone calls, Zoom meetings, webinars, e-blasts. Our goal is to remain proactive so that we ease your concerns and provide encouragement and a reminder that you are still on track to meet your goals. There is no doubt we are in a challenging time, facing an evolving pandemic situation and its effects on how we work and live. The global economy and investment markets have taken substantial hits in the short term and health concerns are top of mind. Here at Versant, the well-being of you, your family, your charitable endeavors, and your community are at the center of everything we do. Access to your team of professionals during this time is our top priority and we stand ready to provide perspective in any area of planning or concern on a moment's notice. In today's webinar, we are going to talk about the activities we are doing behind the scenes, activities to optimize your financial well being. We will also answer any questions you might have regarding a number of topics. We believe the best thing to do is to stay on course with your plan with possible minor adjustments. That is what the plan is there for. It already anticipates and plans for setbacks. We revisit this plan frequently together so that we can support timely actions if necessary. In the short term, markets are going to fluctuate with new and unexpected developments, and it's important to stick to a long-term investing <laughs> approach and not let fear or euphoria dictate your plan's outcomes. We know this can be challenging at times. Believe me, we lose sleep for you. While we are not going to discuss investments in this webinar today, Tom and Brandon will be conducting a webinar on June 10th, where they will discuss investments and the current markets. I will point out, however, that we are always looking for opportunities whether the market is up, down, or sideways. That means we structure portfolios to contain investments that will work in all sorts of economic and market environments, whether we expect them or not. So you have resources to draw on in the future. With that, let's get started. Brian has a few house, excuse me, Brian has a few house tips before we dive in. Brian? Thank you, Liz. A few housekeeping things to take note of. Uh, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat space on the right side of your monitor, and we'll answer them later in the presentation. All attendees are on mute, so please use the chat feature for any questions or comments. Uh, the chats are private and are being managed by our moderator, and the webinar is being recorded, so a replay link will be sent out tomorrow. If you're having any connection issues watching the webinar, there's a red reconnect button at the top of the screen. 
and we will plan to wrap up the webinar by 12.30. As Liz said, um, in addition to our normal calls and Zoom meetings with your Versant team, we've been creating and sharing more content in these past few months than any other period. These additional resources are meant as a supplement to your one-on-one -on -one relationships, and they allow us to convey our current thinking in a timely manner. And we use a variety of different channels to communicate. Uh, first are our webinars. We've hosted several already, uh, and as Liz mentioned, our next one is Wednesday, June 10th at 1130. Tom and Brandon are gonna focus on investments in the current market conditions. So please save the date and plan to attend. We do send often uh, email blasts. If you have not done so already, please add connected at versantcm.com to your address book. This will ensure that our communications make it to your inbox and you can stay current. Some of the things you can expect to see are your quarterly reports, uh, various materials, weekly market briefs, and other timely news and information. We also have a strong digital presence. Um, depending on the platform that you follow, we are likely there. Uh, the first one we want to mention is the versantvoice.com. This is a great place for daily content that will impact your financial well-being. So if you're only going to follow us in one place, we would recommend that that Versant Voice is the one place. If you're a Facebook user, uh, we have a Facebook uh, presence. You'll find daily news, lifestyle articles, and our own content on Facebook. Our LinkedIn activity is more business and market related. Uh, on Twitter, you'll find really a mix of all of our content. And then our Instagram, uh, you'll find mostly information about the culture at Versant and the things that the people are doing. And then finally is our YouTube channel. This is where we store all of our videos. So the replay for our webinars and also from time to time we'll create uh, videos on topics. So for example, we recently posted a video on financial literacy. So in addition to executing our long-term investment strategy, um, we're going to go through some of the ways that Versant is working behind the scenes to manage the current situation and to provide you advice and guidance. So one of the first ways is tax loss harvesting. When the markets behave badly, it allows for an opportunity to harvest losses for income tax purposes. Tax loss harvesting allows us the ability to sell investments that are down replace them with reasonably similar investments, and then offset future realized investment gains with those losses. As long as we don't go back to the original investment within 30 days, the loss is captured and carries forward for your lifetime. This can be a huge asset, especially if or when tax rates rise. The end result is that less of your money goes to taxes and more stays invested and working for you. Just to give you some perspective, in the last two weeks of March, Versant placed 1,616 loss harvesting trades, resulting in over $25.3 million of losses, assuming a 25% capital gain tax rate, 20% for federal and 5% for state, this results in tax savings of over $6.3 million for our clients. Another strategy that we do uh, in any environment, not just this pandemic, is rebalancing and making sure that we have assets in the right accounts. So I'm sure you are all familiar with the term buy low, sell high. Rebalancing forces us to do this without any biases. Our goal is to continue to buy at low prices and add to the asset classes that haven't done as well as others. Rebalancing is a, dis a disciplined strategy we do, regardless of whether we are having market volatility. We review portfolios on an ongoing basis and rebalance to make sure cash remains at the right levels and to maintain your target asset allocation. It's important to remember 
that this asset allocation was determined when we went through your capital sufficiency analysis. There is a reason we have a target allocation. This is what helps you meet your long-term goals and live the life you imagined. In addition, we look for opportunities to maximize your retirement accounts. This means holding tax inefficient investments in IRAs and other deferred accounts while keeping tax efficient investments in taxable accounts. This is called asset location and is another way to help you keep money in your pocket rather than sending it to the taxing authorities. Even if the financial markets go down more in the short term, History has shown us that they will recover, and those who have continued to rebalance will do well and be rewarded. This is how wealth is made. When it comes to estate planning, not everyone needs a complex array of trusts, but everyone should have a plan that addresses all of the details of incapacity. This greatly reduces the burden on the survivors and the people that need to make decisions on our behalf. Estate planning is not all about money. It's about preferences. Things like healthcare directives, durable powers of attorney, planning for your young adult, trusted contacts. COVID-19 has given us, maybe even forced us, an opportunity to revisit our preferences. Do we have the right people in place to make decisions if we were to become incapacitated? Decisions in regards to our finances as well as our health. What about that do not resuscitate provision? How does that work in an environment like COVID? What about our kids? Do our young adult children or grandchildren have their documents in place in the event someone needs to step in to make decisions for them? Remember, once you are 18, parents do not have that automatic right anymore. In the event that there is fear of financial exploitation or fraud in your accounts, have we named trusted contacts? These are proactive conversations we are having with you so that your desires, expectations, and preferences are met if we find ourselves in these predicaments. These are ongoing conversations not just during this pandemic. One thing is for certain, change. Preferences change and evolve. We want to make sure your documents reflect your current preferences. With the Fed's dropping rates, interest rates are extremely competitive. It may be a good time to reduce expenses by refinancing existing mortgages and other loans, despite the general economic turmoil. In addition, if there are estate planning strategies that leverage intrafamily loans, those can also be re refinanced at very low rates. If there are short-term cash needs, margin rates are very low. This allows you to borrow against mm -hmm. your investments rather than sell them while they are down. We've also been helping our small business clients obtain PPP funds and are working with them to get these loans forgiven where appropriate. Each one of you has a different circumstance, so there is no blanket advice here, but it is important for you to know that Versen is evaluating these opportunities and recommending options where appropriate. When it comes to retirement planning, there are also opportunities. Brian is gonna take us through some of them now. Historically, in the long run, equity investors have been rewarded with higher returns for taking on short-term volatility. And the pullback in asset prices in 2020 was of a magnitude we, we hadn't seen since 2008 and 2009. So we've been taking advantage of this opportunity with several different strategies. Uh, the first one is a Roth conversion. As you might remember, your traditional IRA is tax deferred and then the distributions are taxed as ordinary income. Whereas your Roth IRA is also tax deferred, but the distributions are tax free. So the idea is to convert funds today from your traditional IRA and pay the taxes and then put them into work in the Roth environment where they're going to be uh, still tax deferred, but then the tax free withdrawals down the road. 
And the reason we really like the Roth balances right now, uh, one of the major reasons was the elimination of the stretch IRA. So in the past, if you did not consume all of your IRA assets, your heirs could stretch the tax deferral over their lifetime. With the elimination of the stretch IRA, the account has to be depleted in 10 years. So all of the dollars held in that traditional IRA will be taxed as ordinary income when distributed. While a Roth IRA also has to be depleted in 10 years, the distributions are tax-free. So the planning opportunity here is to evaluate how and when the distributions might be taxed. So for example, if your heirs are in their peak earning years, they may have to take a distribution and it might not be as efficient as if you converted at your current rates today. And this is a strategy normally we would look at later in the year. Uh, by then you have a handle on what your tax picture looks like for the whole year and then you determine how much you might convert. Uh, the reason we're having the conversation now is we want to get the dollars to work in the Roth environment to capture as much of the recovery as possible. So if you think tax rates are going to be higher in the future, it could make sense to pay the taxes now and consider this strategy. The other area we've done a lot of planning lately is contributions to 529 college savings accounts, IRAs, 401ks, and health savings accounts. So a key date to remember here, uh, the deadline for prior year contributions has been extended to July 15th for IRAs. And then really any environment where you would normally make regular contributions throughout the year, or maybe you fund your accounts very heavily toward the end of the year, the recommendation is considering accelerating those forward if you can. If you have, Ryan, another, have they also extended the date for the health savings account? That is correct. Um, they have also extended the date for the funding of the health savings account to July 15th. Perfect. Which the health savings account um, is a great tool. It's a, it's a relatively new tool. Um, you have to have a high deductible plan that qualifies. But the reason we like the health savings account is you get triple tax benefit. So you get a benefit when you fund it, you get tax deferred growth, and if you use the funds for a qualified healthcare expense, it's a tax-free withdrawal. Um, that's a pretty good deal. And then the other feature is if you don't use it, you get to keep the money. And when you turn 65, you can actually use it for your normal retirement living expenses. In that scenario, it is taxed. But it's a great tool. Um, relative to the other things we've talked about, uh, you can't put a lot in this account. And that kind of is an indicator to us that it's pretty valuable to fund. Um, and then the and last item. Can I just add one thing, Brian? Sure. Just to clarify okay. on the health savings accounts, once you're 65, um, you can still use it for medical expenses and it is not taxed. It's only if you were to take it out and use it for other living expenses that it is taxed. Absolutely. Wow. So in this environment where we're all having to fund our own health care, um, it's a great tool to have in the uh, box of financial strategies there. And then one last item, uh, 529 college savings plans. Now might be the time to make a contribution if you have a young person in your life. And you can also front load five years of annual gifting in one year. So um, you know that child's gonna go to school at some point, now might be a great time to get that funded. So Brian, that means I can put $75,000 in and front load for five years? That's correct. All right, one of the ways we spend our time at Versant is keeping current with new legislation and distilling it down into what's most relevant to you. So the CARES Act um, actually is, stands for the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. It's the largest ever stimulus package in the US. Um, it was actually the third stimulus package this year. It was introduced in late January, became law in late March. It absolutely dwarfs any of the stimulus that was done during the financial crisis. So the two takeaways there was it was massive and it was really quick. Um, there's a few planning provisions. We just wanted to make sure everyone was aware. Um, first, it doubles the maximum amount you can borrow from your 401k plan. 
And then also it gives you some flexibility to withdraw from your retirement account, such as your IRA. Um, you can actually take withdrawals if you're under 59 and a half, if you qualify, and you have a three year period to replenish the account. Um, so just a couple tools, if you need to bridge the gap, why we work through this short term situation, relatively speaking. Probably the biggest item for our clients in the CARES Act is the waiver of the required minimum distribution from all retirement plans for 2020. Um, this is the big one. Most of our clients, if they don't need to take an IRA distribution, uh, they prefer not to pay the taxes. So for 2020, uh, no RMDs are necessary. So Brian, if I wanted to still do my qualified charitable distributions, am I still allowed to do that regardless of whether I have to take an RMD? Yes, that's correct, Liz. Um, you can still pro uh, process a QTD or a qualified charitable distribution um, despite not having to take an RMD out. Thank you. And then one last thing in the CARES Act for the charitably, charitably inclined, uh, donors can actually get a deduction for contributions up to 100% of their AGI. So. <clears throat> so everyone's been spending more time at home. Uh, possibly much of that time has been spent on a computer, either working or ordering things from uh, for home delivery that you used to pick up at the store. Oftentimes, cybersecurity becomes a priority only after there's some kind of security event. So regardless of your primary use of your home computer and network, it's essential to take some steps to protect yourself. One of the many, many unique things about Versant is we actually have an in-house technology expert. Uh, John Mason is our manager of investment technologies and operations. Because of his expertise, our transition to work from home was seamless. Um, since then, John has kept our team and you, our clients, secure by proactively enhancing our procedures. So this allows us to do everything we can do to make sure your information is kept secure. Just a few things we wanted to go over um, that will help keep your account safe. Um, first, we have a verbal password procedure for all of our clients. So we maintain a verbal password uh, in the event your team's not available to speak with you directly, say they were in a meeting, uh, any requests could still be fulfilled. And if needed, we can use that verbal password as an added layer of protection. Uh, additionally, we recommend you use a multi-factor authentication and strong passwords. What we mean by that is if you can have a password and maybe a token or a text uh, key on top of the password, that's preferred. And again, the longer the password, the better, and phrases are even better than having a password. Also, always a good idea to keep your browser and systems updated. Hackers and fraudsters are constantly trying to get into your computer, and then the software companies are trying to stay one step ahead. So by keeping your systems updated, you can patch the known gaps in your system. Be cautious when you're following links in an email. When in doubt, don't click. If you hover over the link, it should show you whether or not it's a trusted website. Um, if you receive an email from a place you do business, you can just always go directly to that site. Um, often these phishing emails, they want you to update or verify your information and we'll provide you a link to do so. Um, when in doubt, don't do it. And then the last item is probably the most important thing on the slide here. Always, always, always verbally authorize any money movements. Um, anytime you're sending money electronically, always call and verbally confirm the instructions. Um, some big red flags to watch for are if the recipient is not available to talk, um, if there's any kind of sense of urgency, or anytime there's a change of instructions in the transaction, we always say stop and pick up the phone. Um, it's something that we do at Versant. Um, behind the scenes, and we've had cases where um, we're fortunate we know our clients, we know the habits, we know the flow of funds, and we've actually intercepted things where um, we get an email that's supposedly from you, but um, your email has been compromised, you know, whether it's a Hotmail account or a Gmail account, and then supposedly you 
are asking us to send the funds elsewhere. And we know that um, that's not part of the transaction. We pick the phone up and can intercept that. So um, always verbally authorize money movements. Yes, so that, and that is one of our processes, Brian. So anytime we're moving money, I know it can be frustrating at times for clients, but we do require a, a verbal um, authorization as well, just to make sure. Right. So there's a lot of times if we're going to send a wire for a car purchase, we're probably going to call the car dealer and make sure that that's a, a good set of instructions. Um, just kind of one of those things we do. So that concludes um, the topics that we wanted to share with you today. Uh, we covered a range of things. Uh, some are may, may or may not apply to your individual situation. So please follow up with your respective team. Um, and then a couple of reminders. If you could please type your questions in the chat space at the right side of your monitor. We have uh, quite a few in the queue already. And then don't forget our next webinar is Wednesday, June 10th, 1130. Again, that's going to be Tom and Brandon focusing on the investments and the state of the market. So with that, I will pass it to Liz and we'll uh, take some questions. Yeah, so I guess to summarize, if there is one key takeaway, it is to continue focusing on your goals. We have a plan. It's in place. Let's follow it. Over time, Versant has thoughtfully collaborated with you to create these plans, and they provide a foundation based on your goals and timetable, as opposed to emotions or panic. So navigating through rocky markets can be difficult, but following proven investing and planning principles, we can help you stay the course. Thank you again for joining us today. We'll take the remaining time to answer any questions. And let's see, I'm getting these questions live, so bear with me. So Brian, one question that we did get is, what is the difference between the provisions for required minimum distributions in the SECURE Act versus the CARES Act? Oh, that's a good question. Um, we didn't talk a lot about the SECURE Act today. Um, the SECURE Act was a big piece of legislation that changed some retirement provisions that was passed at the end of December. So as it relates to required minimum distributions, you might remember you used to have to take them or start to take them at age 70 and a half. Now you don't have to take them until age 72. So that's the big difference. The SECURE Act pushed the RMD age from 70 and a half to 72. And then the CARES Act came along after that and said no RMDs for 2020. So if you're starting your RMDs, um, you don't have to take one. If you're not starting them, um, you don't have to until you're 72. Another question that just came in was, how large can the charitable contributions be this year? So Brian, I know you covered that under the CARES Act. So is it 100% of your adjusted gross income? I believe so. So the amount will be different from everyone. It's based on whatever your taxable income is. But if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one with one of us, um, we'd be happy to walk through your particular situation. Another question coming in, can you still get a PPP loan? The answer is no. Um, not at this time. Most of the banks, um, their queues are full. Uh, most of them have already been processed. If some of the companies return um, some of the money that they have taken out, then there might be an opportunity. But as of right now, um, nobody is accepting new applications. Hey, Liz, I've got a, a loss harvesting question for you here. Um, will we go back to the original investment after 30 days? So that is a great question and unfortunately it depends <laughs> so obviously as the market um, goes up in the short term if there are real if there are short-term gains we may not realize them in order to go back to the original investment but it's important to know that versant does have a list of investments for each asset class that have been approved by our investment committee and we are comfortable holding any of them um, but to the extent we can continue to do loss harvesting and go back um, to those original investments, we will, but it will certainly depend on the short-term gain situation. 
Another question about PPP loan. Uh, I am unsure about how to use the proceeds to ensure loan forgiveness. Can someone at Versant advise me? Yes, we absolutely can. We can absolutely advise you. So the general rule is 75% uh, or more needs to go through wages and 25% can be used for rent and utilities. Now wages is a very broad term and it can be tricky if you are self-employed. So I will definitely um, take this question and follow up with you individually um, since every circumstance is different, but yes, we can. Another question, Brian, this is a great one for you. Should I wait to contribute to my retirement accounts when things calm down? Absolutely not. Um, I think if you wait for things to calm down, the opportunity will be in the rearview mirror. Um, having been through this cycle a few times before, um, I, I'm certain this will pass and we'll look back on it and say it was a great opportunity. Um, what we don't know is the duration. So. If you think about your retirement accounts, those are assets you're likely going to consume many years down the road. So I would definitely continue your contributions. Um, if anything, if you can increase them, uh, take advantage of the current market levels and the volatility that we might have. Um, I think that, that that would be a strategy that you'd be happy you did um, when you look back on this period and the future. Here's one for you, Liz. What are we doing to keep the office safe when we open up? Oh. Well, as we reopen, we will keep social distancing guidelines in place. Um, we're encouraging all of our workers, clients, and vendors to wash their hands and use hand sanitizer frequently. We will have hand sanitizer stations throughout the office. Um, we have arranged for cleaning and disinfecting for frequently touched surfaces at least once a day and more often in high traffic areas. We will be providing uh, PPE to workers and clients or vendors that request them. Um, and we have made a policy that addresses the guidelines on proper usage. Um, and we have a policy from working from home as well that treats all workers fairly. So as we do start to migrate back into the office, um, it will look very different. We won't all be there at once. Um, you'll see probably every other cube um, in, our, in our cubicle area being utilized um, so that we keep that six feet apart. And then you will also see a different setup in the conference room um, if and when we, we get back to having uh, in-person meetings. I've got one here I'll take, Liz. Uh, how much can I contribute to my HSA for 2019? Uh, great question. For a single person, it's $3,500. Uh, for a family, it's $7,000. If you're over 55, there's a catch-up provision for an extra $1,000. So um, uh, again, not a huge amount compared to what you might be able to put in a 529 or a 401k, but I think it's because it's such a great tool to save money in. We do have a question about expected inflation. I'm going to defer that question until the June 10th webinar. It will be covered um, then. I think um, those are the end of our questions. So thank you again for joining us today. And if you have any other particular questions for your circumstance, please don't hesitate to reach out to your wealth counselor. And we look forward to seeing you all very soon, whether it's on Zoom or eventually back in person. Um, and stay safe and have a great afternoon.